Imagine. Imagine me as a little girl singing to my cat mittens. A girl swimming in the cold, clear waters of Maine. A girl who won spelling bees and had perfect attendance in school. Imagine me turning off lights, checking the stove, unplugging toasters, counting and rearranging, because intrusive thoughts convinced me that something bad was going to happen and I needed to prevent it. As an adolescent, fear became fears. The unknown was so much greater. Expectations changed, my body changed. At the time, I didn't understand that I feared conflict, failure, disappointing, disappointment, fear of fear, fear of responsibility, fear of vulnerability. Instead, I was afraid of being fat, F-A-T. Counting, checking, making rules, drawing, measuring, calculating, rigid routines, lists, busy mind, racing thoughts, denying hunger, limiting my food. I was powerful. I was calm. I was in control. This was my high, soaring like a bird, until I wasn't. The disgust and self-hatred after eating anything caused panic. If I didn't get rid of the food, everyone would know that I wasn't strong enough, good enough. I had no choice but to flush it away and jog it off. I was ashamed and silent. The vast darkness of depression crept in slowly, bit by bit. And then its enormous embrace took hold of me. It is in that darkness that the enticing voice of death called me by name. And I listened more than once. There were hospitalizations, locked doors, ambulance rides, nutritional supplements, treatment rooms, therapy, tests, bathroom checks, medications. IVs, meal plans, appointments. A painter needs a work surface. She requires training, individual and group. Classes and types of paint. Tools in a toolbox and techniques. If she wants to improve, she will practice what she has been taught, both in the studio and at home. A successful painter accepts that getting her hands dirty is part of the process, that making mistakes is an opportunity to learn and tries again. A painter may strive to create the ultimate piece of work, a masterpiece. I actually don't paint. <laughs> um, never have. Um, but I imagine that the process of becoming a skilled painter is much like the ongoing process of recovery. I looked at the meal plans my dietitian created, swallowed the handful of prescribed pills when I felt like it. I was okay paying my therapist to sit with me in complete silence. At least I was keeping my appointments. But it wasn't until ECT, or electroconvulsive shock therapy, unlocked the studio door, and the medications guided me through that door that I was able to spend time inside and access the life-saving tools that had been there all along. Every instructor has been valuable, even if they showed me what I like and don't like, what works for me and what doesn't. But having a few positive connections has been life-altering. I came to sessions with an empty canvas, not sure how to begin, in time, I began to make brush strokes, eventually use a vibrant purple paint. I learned that I am my own person, a woman named Melissa, that I have my own thoughts, opinions, talents, and yes, flaws. I was shown that I am worth sitting in silence with, but when I do speak, my words have value. I was given a space to practice, make mistakes, name, confront, release, forgive, and accept. I take my toolbox wherever I go because I just never know when I may need it. I pull out Name Those Feelings cards, a journal, deep breaths, bubble bath, music, my swimsuit. It's a big toolbox. 
snacks, affirmations, and the color gray. For those times, all I can see is black and white. People are complicated. Relationships are even more complicated. I have learned from my painting peers, my friends, my coworkers, and my husband that I do indeed need people. By risking disappointment and judgment, I experience relationships filled with joy. I have allies. I am never alone, and neither are they. I thought that one day I would finish painting with a masterpiece, a destination of sorts. But my idea of what a masterpiece is has evolved over time. It's not about a masterpiece. I am a work in progress. My brain has its way of thinking, especially during times of stress. I have certain triggers that can distract me from my work. These can be anything from the terror-filled news, a scale, an argument with my husband, or managing the long-term health effects of prior self-destructive behaviors. I am aware of these and turn off the TV, walk away, speak up, and stay mindful. I feel the darkness on the periphery, and I can usually keep it there. When my thoughts prevent me from being present at work or in a conversation, when I notice the fat feeling is back and I want to deny myself the food I both deserve and enjoy, when my body aches for a quiet, dark room with a warm bed, I reach out to my doctor to make a plan. I utilize my relationships, medications, and my tools. A masterpiece is not one painting or the painting. It's painting. Each day that I get out of bed, feed my body and soul, mother my beautiful daughter, partner with my husband, I feel the warmth of the sun, I see the beauty in the day. This is a work of art. Some days, I think it may even be a masterpiece.